there is a mystique about photographing sunrises and sunsets. They are difficult to predict, and when you get a cracker, the photographic colours lack intensity. They are difficult to forecast when running a photographic holiday, sunrises in particular. I don't want to drag everyone out of doors at an ungodly hour for nothing. It is easier to sort out the photography. If you are shooting on auto, program or aperture priority using matrix metering, the colours can lack intensity. Sunrises and sunsets have an enormous dynamic range, a huge contrast variation, especially if the sun is in shot. When dark clouds are also part of the composition, auto and matrix metering increases the exposure without your knowledge, resulting in the perfect average, overexposing the sunrise or sunset. Therefore, rather than rely on instant gratification, the photographer needs to tell the camera how to meter and where. There are at least two ways, spot metering or exposure compensation, and both can be used together. Spot metering is best done with an electronic finder. It gives a live preview courtesy of the camera's computer. Therefore, adjustments related to exposure and many other modifications are shown before the shot is taken. An optical finder cannot do this, but the screen on the camera back may have live view and will show adjustments. To spot meter with an electronic finder, Select a colour intensity helped by live view to determine the exposure and lock by half depressing the shutter button on single autofocus tracking mode. If this is not the correct composition, reposition the camera, but keep finger lightly depressed on button to maintain selected exposure and then take shot. With some cameras, you may have to depress the AEL button first. Save to RAW and lighten any dark areas in post-production. Spot metering is precise, easy to get wrong. Therefore, use center-weighted metering when using an optical viewfinder, as it has more latitude. Exposure compensation is an alternative. Reducing exposure to a minus EV value guided by an electronic finder gives similar results without spot metering. You can also combine both techniques. Flare is a major problem with the sun in shot. Here, a prime lens is better than a zoom, but in either case, stop down to f16 or 22 to reduce flare. You might even get a starburst. Because of diffraction, this technique is frowned upon by purists. But which is worse? Surely, flare is. Having got the exposure right, we want the sunrise or sunset in the correct place. A watery foreground gives two for the price of one. Avoid large field areas. They will end up as jet black with no detail whatsoever. You want a silhouette, such as a winter tree, a sculpture, or a building with a distinctive appearance, such as a windmill, if you can find one. It will be rendered silhouette, but this is an effect making the best use of a photographic constraint and is something the eye does not see. A view of a city from a tall building looks great, and finally, don't forget the glow. Yes, it's behind you. Predicting sunrises and sunsets is difficult. As yet, I haven't found the formula. You want some cloud, ideally 50%, perhaps a little bit more, but not a clear sky. 
although that is better than 100% cloud cover, then you might as well <laughs> stay in bed or have an evening meal. However, be responsive to unusual and remarkable weather occurrences. A few years ago, a strong wind blew across the Sahara, picking up fine particles of sand and taking them north to us, creating incredible weather hues and effects all over Europe and the UK. It also proved to be the acid test for the weather seals on my camera. Also, an active volcano in the right place might also be useful.